The Cold War, Causation by Kendall Johnson. In 1945, the United States and the Soviet Union were allies, jointly triumphant in World War II, which ended with total victory for Soviet and American forces over Adolf Hitler's Nazi empire in Europe. Within just a few years, wartime allies became mortal enemies, locked in a global struggle of military, political, economic, and ideological issues to prevail in a new Cold War. The first cause of the Cold War started on February 4, 1945 at the Yalta. The big three Allied leaders, American President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill met at the Yalta Conference to make arrangements for the post-war world order. Their contradictory agreements included a declaration to respect democracy throughout Europe, but also the recognition of a de facto Soviet sphere of influence in Eastern Europe. At Yalta, the Allies also finalized plans to divide Germany into separate zones of occupation. The second cause for the Cold War was on April 12, 1945, when Franklin Roosevelt died. President Franklin D. Roosevelt suddenly suffers a cerebral hemorrhage and dies, leaving his vice president, Harry Truman, to take over the presidency. Truman has only been vice president for 82 days and has little communication with, with Roosevelt about the administration's policies. After taking his oath of office, Truman tells reporters, Boys, if you ever pray, pray for me now. August 10, 1945, Korea divided at the 38th parallel. At the end of World War II, Korea, which was then occupied during the war by Japanese forces, is divided at the 38th parallel and two new states are established. North Korea is run by communist Kim Il-sung, while South Korea is run by anti-communist autocrat Smigun Ri. February 22, 1946, George Keenan and the Containment. Diplomat George Keenan writes his long telegram from the U.S. Embassy in Moscow advocating a policy of containment. Quote, it is clear that the main element of any United States policy towards the Soviet Union must be that of long-term, patient, but firm and vigilant containment of Russian expansive tendencies. It is clear that the United States cannot expect in the foreseeable future to enjoy political intimacy with the Soviet regime. It must continue to regard that the Soviet Union as a rival, not a partner, in the political arena. March 12, 1947, The Truman Doctrine In a speech later remembered as the Truman Doctrine, President Harry S. Truman pledges American assistance to any nation in the world threatened by communism, officially establishing the worldwide containment of communism as a vital American national security interest. June 5, 1947, The Marshall Plan in a speech made at Harvard University, Secretary of State George Marshall proposes the Marshall Plan, a $13 billion foreign aid package designed to help Europe recover from the devastation of World War II. June 15, 
Effects of the Cold War Western Europe nations and the United States get together and form the NATO. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union and satellite states get together and form the Warsaw Pact. The treaty called on the member states to come to the defense of any member attacked by an outside force, and it set up a unified military command under Marshal Ivan S. Konev of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union blockaded West Berlin, a.k.a. the West Berlin Wall. But after the Western Allies performed an airlift, the Soviet Union took down the Berlin Wall, then West Berlin was on its own. The United States helped Greece and Turkey economically so they could fight against communism, otherwise known as the Truman Doctrine. The Cold War inflicted fear of war on the citizens. The fear of war was instigated by the arms race. The Cuban Missile Crisis is a great example of this, which caused high tension within the USA as the missiles in Cuba could reach the USA at any time. Until the U-2 planes found the missiles in Cuba, the fear was not significant as people knew that the missiles in the USSR could not cover such long distance to reach the USA. However, the missiles in Cuba threatened the USA security to a significant extent that many ex Americans had to live in fear, although the attitude of the Mutual Assured Destruction, also known as the MAD, was existent, the missiles in such proximity alarmed many Americans at that time. Apart from Cuban Missile Crisis, Americans lived in constant fear as the Cold War could turn into a hot war at any time. Not only did the Cold War impact the USA politically, but economically as well. The impact was caused mainly by the increase in the amount of taxes. The United States used to adopt isolationism, previously meaning that the USA did not intervene in any other foreign matters to only concentrate on the domestic issues. As soon as the USA decided to intervene in foreign matters, Americans had to pay more taxes to support the USA's actions. These actions, including the arms race and other wars, required massive amounts of capital. For instance, the Vietnam War was one of the factors that used up massive amounts of capital. The Vietnam War was very different from any other wars because it was a war between the Viet Congs. The Viet Congs had successfully planned the strategies to kill many Americans without having Americans' latest technology such as tanks and airplanes. As the war developed, it was estimated that it costed Americans $400,000 to kill one Viet Cong. To conclude, although the Cold War never led to any extensive war between two major powers, the USA and the USSR, it caused massive impact upon the world, including the American society. The main impacts include anti-communism, fear of war, and economic damage. Of all the impacts, I believe that anti-communism is one that caused the everlasting impact on American and European society. The fear of war and the economical impact had short-term effects, while the hatred towards communism will exist within a European society.